got your plan, which is you're going to land in Israel. You've written a book proposal that's given you basically your fool's cap. You know what your theme is going to be. You know your genre. You know your idiom. Uh, how did you actually execute that? Were there moments when you were like, oh my gosh, this isn't exactly the way I thought it was. This guy isn't as cool as I thought he was, or this story isn't so great. How did you negotiate through those times of panic where your fool's cap seemed to be failing you? Did, did that ever happen? No, it actually it did. it, it didn't happen. Um, but um, because as soon as I started to meet people, and even I met Lou before I even went to Israel. Sure. So I sort of knew if there were and you if read I could every keep book talking, there was on, on right. the Six Day War. I mean, right. I, I saw your shelf. You yeah. had, what, 114 Well, I didn't books? read them all, but I, I know but, you're like, oh, yeah, yeah. That but, one's boring. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it, what you say is interesting, because I, I had Danny Grossman, who was like my partner, my, my rabbi, my mentor, my guide, the guy who would get me into these various people. And uh, he introduced me to another concept, or a couple of concepts, kind of like Ain Brera, that were kind of IDF concepts, and one of them in this, uh, that we've talked about is the Kavana. Yeah. And uh, the Kavana is the intention, as opposed to an, an in a in a. That's it, funny because that's w when you did that interview with Oprah Winfrey, and you asked her right, right before, yeah. and you said to her because you had what like ten seconds before right, the camera right, started, right, right, so yeah. you're like you got to get in a question. Yeah. You're like, how do you prepare for these things? And she said, well. I always have an intention, and if it ever strays, I get back to the intention and keep moving on the intention. And so you asked her, what's your intention today? And she said, the concept of resistance. Exactly, yeah. And that was very smart of her, yeah. on her part. So, um, so, so Danny just like the IDF. explained to me how this, how this <laughs> right. works. And actually, it's a parallel in the American Army, too, in the Marine Corps, too. It's like a, in, an, in an order, in a combat order, they'll be um, objective, and then above that in English will be what they call commander's intent. And so, um, and the same thing in Israel, it's Matara and Kavana. So uh, like for instance, in, a, in the air attack, when we were talking, when I was talking to Ron Ronan and to Giora yeah. and to other people, the objective might be fly to Abu Sawer and destroy that airfield. That's the objective. But the Kavana, one level above that is achieve air superiority. So, so in other words, if you're a pilot or you're you know, a group commander, and let's say you arrive at the airfield and it's socked in with fog, you can't see it, you know? So you can't attack it. Instead of panicking, you, so you're, in other words, your objective, you can no longer accomplish your objective. So you just bump it one level up to the Kavanaugh, to the intention, which is achieve air superiority. So then you can say, well, there's another airfield over there that's right. not socked in in fog. I'll just change my orders and hit Take it. Take that one out. Yeah. So in answering what you, your question, John, like Danny would say to me over and over, he said, what's our Kavanaugh here? And we used to have meetings, you know? What's the Kavanaugh? What's our intention here? And, and when we weren't sure who we're gonna talk to or what, you know, we'd go back to that. So like my intention would be, I've gotta talk to at least half a dozen paratroopers who were there at the Western Wall. Right. So that then we could get drop one level down to objective. Ah, we've got to find Yoram Zamosh, we've got to find Uzi Alam, da 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 da, da oh, and I set up a, a thing like that. Oh. So there's a famous speech from General Israel Tal, who was one of the generals leading the attack across the Sinai Peninsula towards Egypt, toward the Suez Canal, in which there were three Israeli divisions versus seven Egyptian divisions. So it's all tank warfare. And um, so this speech, if you go to Israel today and you go to the tank museum at Latrun, it's on the wall and it's kind of, it's quoted in military academies all over the world. Very short speech and, and really famous. So and he, this is what he told his troops. And this is coming back to Ein Brera, no alternative, the doctrine of no alternative. And so the overall concept that the Kavana of, of, the, of the tanks as they were gonna cross the Israeli border enter Egypt, enter the Sinai Peninsula, and go, was, was to hit this one place called El Arish, that was the, yeah. the headquarters of the Egyptian you know, 7th Division. So General Tal called all his officers together, and, it, and this is the gist of the speech. And he says, I know that you young guys have got 
meticulous plans and you've studied them down to the letter. And again, this relates to writing, exactly, right? <laughs> you've studied, and I'm, and I'm completely confident that you can execute them you know, to the perfect detail. But let me tell you something. Tomorrow when the war starts, you can throw those plans out the window because nothing is going to be how you think it's going to be when the war starts. The lines of advance that you think you're going to be on are, are going to be wrong. You're going to get on the phone to try to reach me. You know, no nothing is going to happen. The guy next to you is going to get killed. He's going to, et cetera, et cetera. So he said, uh, the one thing that must never change, even though the plans are going out the window, is the concept behind the plans. And that concept is that every man, every tank will advance no matter what. Don't worry about protecting the flanks. Don't worry about resupply. In other words, this is actually the concept of blitzkrieg, yeah, it oddly is. enough, I was just taken thinking. from the, this is the blitzkrieg concept. And uh, he says, every man will advance straight forward. And then he said, to, uh, to the troops, he said, now I'm going to tell you something very severe. Ain brera, no alternative. He said, other countries can afford to lose the first battle and regroup and win the war. We can't. If we lose the first battle, our country's going to be wiped out. So you, this is a fight to the death. Every man will attack, not Keep stop, forward. forward motion, forward motion. And he said, tomorrow, Remember that I said El Arish was the objective. He said, he said, tomorrow when you forget everything else, when you're panicking, just remember one thing, keep going forward toward the canal, towards El Arish, and I'll meet you there, I'll shake your hand. And so that was a, I thought, just a, a great concept for anything, anything that you do in life. What happens then? So finally I just said, fuck it, you know? I said, I'm just gonna write the book. So I just plunged in and just did it from memory. There's another concept over there, the balagan, and it basically means craziness, chaos. They are comfortable in chaos. 